everyone and welcome to the very first instalment of this year's monthly favourites. We're back to the start all over again. January has finished or it will be finished for you now. It's not quite finished for me just yet and that means that it's time to share all my favourite beauty products with you and if I'm being honest I haven't really embraced much beauty in January. I haven't really worn a lot of makeup only if I've gone out which has been a very rare occasion and my skincare routine really hasn't changed for months and months. There's only very few things that have been added in and I think I've probably told you about all of those already. So I have a very small selection of favourites to show you but they're definitely worth talking about because they are all amazing and the first one that comes from Bobbi Brown this is actually a Christmas present I was very excited and I felt very lucky to get it because I've wanted it for absolutely ages it's been on Christmas and birthday lists for a long long time and it's the Bobbi Brown full coverage face brush and this actually looks very similar to the Real Techniques buffing brush which is my all time favourite foundation brush but this is the only one that I've been using all month long on the rare occasion I have actually been wearing foundation this is all I've reached for and it's such a nice brush because it's very fluffy it seems to just buff the product on so smoothly whereas the Real Techniques one can take a little bit longer because it is synthetic it just sometimes leaves a few of those little lines and marks and you just really have to work in not that that's a bad brush at all it is an amazing one this just seems to make everything look a lot more airbrushed a lot more quickly and it's so cute and tiny really easy to travel with so I've really been enjoying that one it looks a bit dirty because I've used it loads recently and then when I have been wearing a base if I do reach for a foundation or a tinted moisturiser it's been the NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturiser and I've had this in my collection for a while and I kind of go through phases of using it I was really into it last summer but then I kind of dropped the tinted moisturisers in favour of full coverage foundations for winter but this is just I felt like what my skin needed in January I didn't want anything heavy, I wanted to let it breathe, but I still wanted a bit of coverage and considering this is just a tinted moisturiser, it does have an amazing amount of cover. It's also oil free and I do always look for that in a tinted moisturiser. Even though I have slightly dry skin, I still don't like them to feel too greasy and look too shiny on my skin, so oil free is definitely the thing I look for. And this is just a really lovely formula and it lasts a long time considering it is just a tinted moisturiser and it just makes your skin look very fresh and very healthy and a bit more even, but not like you're wearing a really heavy foundation so that's been a favourite of mine and then my last makeup favourite I did mention briefly at the beginning of the month when I was having a little bit of a drugstore takeover on the blog and I picked up a few things from the Isles of Boots and this was one of them it's the Soap and Glory Solar Powder and this is a duo bronzer you have a lighter side and a darker one but I tend to just swirl them all up together I'm a really big fan of Soap and Glory makeup already and it seems whenever I try something from them I absolutely love it and it's really brilliant quality and really stands out to me and this is no exception it's a really well pigmented bronzer and when you you buy bronzers from the lower price brands and the drugstore they tend to be slightly more chalky and powdery they take a lot more building up than a more high-end bronzer would do but this is just so intensely pigmented and the color of it as well is lovely it's a really nice warm tone brown but without being orangey or yellowy or even a little bit greeny looking it's just the perfect shade the formula as well is so blendable really lovely to work with and as well as the tinted moisturizer this is all I've been wearing on my skin instead of powder then bronzer then blusher and contour all of that I've just been putting this on and just buffing it all over my face to give me a bit of warmth and a bit of glow and it makes a really nice product for that. So on to a few hair bits next I think I'll talk about and all the eagle eye viewers out there may have noticed that I've coloured my hair again. I haven't had it cut but it is a lot lighter and a lot blonder. I'm not sure if it's going to pick up on camera but it's very very blonde in real life. Um, I basically had balayage free lights for anyone that's wondering which was a bit scary during the process because my hairdresser was just painting bleach onto my head without any foil anything like that but it turned out really lovely and I'm really happy with it. Going off on a bit of a tangent here but I was thinking about doing an updated hair care routine, all the products that I use and styling, all sorts of things like that so let me know if you'd like to see that. I always enjoy making those videos because I get to talk about my hair for an hour or so but not many people seem to actually watch them so let me know if you would like to see that and I will try and get one filmed. As for the actual products that I've been using I really have stripped back my routine recently so it tends to just be shampoo and conditioner, maybe a treatment if I feel like my hair needs it and then an oil and a styling product and the oil that I've been in love with absolutely obsessed with is the Wella SP Lux oil and my hairdresser actually recommended me this one and it smells amazing no wonder he likes using it while he's in the salon because 
it just smells so so good and the whole Wella range, the whole SP range smells really really good. It is a really deeply nourishing, really reconstructing, very hydrating oil and I notice such a difference when I use this. I put it on wet hair and then I blow dry it or I let it dry naturally and it just leaves my ends so so soft and really just rehydrated and moisturised and especially as I have a bit more blonde in there now it tends to get tiny bit drier so this is a real saviour. I've been really enjoying using this one. And then for styling I've really been into just using the Orbe Apre Beach Wave and Shine Spray and I've had this for a really long time I've only just kind of come round to how to use it properly and it's actually a combination it feels like a combination of my two favourite styling products which are the Orbe Dry Texturising Spray and the Bumble and Bumble City Sweat. It has the same dryness and sort of slightly dry shampoo-y feel of the texturising spray but it also has a kind of hold and a slight waxy feel to it like the City Sweat does so it's a combination of the both which just makes for an amazing product. You can actually use this on wet and dry hair so I tend to sort of spray it through the roots when my hair's wet and then blow dry it to get some extra volume and then once I've styled the rest of my hair I just put it through the lengths and the ends and kind of mess it up to give it a bit of a texturised look. It gives a really lovely PC, slightly beachy, wavy, messy look to the hair and that's definitely the look that I love so I've really been enjoying this so much so that I think I've actually run out though. I did only have a small can just to try it out but I think I might have to invest in the big one and that's quite a scary daunting thing because they are quite pricey and I've also recently run out of my dry texturising spray so I'm going to have to do a double purchase which is probably going to be over £100 which is terrifying so definitely more of a luxury splurge item but definitely worth it. So this month I also rediscovered an old favourite and this is the Kiehl's Creme de Corp Body Lotion. This really is quite a cult product especially within Kiehl's, it's one of their best sellers I think and I've probably gone through about three or four bottles of this stuff. This is the limited edition version that they did for Christmas, this is the Craig and Carl so it's got this kind of pretty pattern on the front of it but this is just such a lovely body lotion and it wasn't until I started using it again that I realised just how soft this makes your skin feel. At the same time though it's not sticky and greasy and it is so lightweight that it actually just sinks straight in. You can put your clothes on and not have to worry about sticking to them when you're wearing this. The thing that I really like about it though is it's unscented. It doesn't have any perfume to it so you don't have to worry about wearing perfume on top and then the scent of the body lotion mixing with it and just making it smell completely different. So it's a really great one if you do like to wear a lot of different perfumes but you don't want anything to kind of mess them up. So really been enjoying that one this month. So last of all and talking of perfumes I have another Christmas gift here, one that I felt incredibly lucky to receive. It is just absolutely beautiful and it's the Diptyque Volutes Eau de Toilette and I just love Diptyque. Everything about them, their perfumes, their candles, everything that they do is just stunning and all the scents are so unique and so different. They're not something that you find in the Isles of Boots or any, you know, standard perfume store. I just really love what they're about. I think the first time I actually smelt this was last Christmas, so about a year ago, and I was just so into it. I really liked the way it smelled and it was very different from anything I had at all. It's definitely a very deep scent, very deep, very musky, a bit woody. It's not one of the floral light kind of fragrances at all and I don't find Diptyque really do many of those. It tends to be quite a deep and very signature scent when you have one from them. It just smells so good, it's so warm and spicy and just everything that I love in a perfume rolled into one. So this is my favourite scent all month and it actually really reminds me of one of the Tom Ford fragrances. I think it's the Velvet Orchid, it's the one in the glass purple bottle. I think it's Velvet Orchid, I write it here somewhere if it's not. Um, but it's really very similar, actually almost identical to my nose. So if you're looking for an alternative to the Tom Ford one, which I'm guessing is probably a lot more expensive than Diptyque, I think it probably would be, then this might be the one for you. So definitely go and smell it if you're near a Space and K or a Diptyque store, or I think they have it in Selfridges as well. Just go and smell it because it's so so good. So those are all my January favourites, I hope you enjoyed watching that. I can't believe we've gone through a whole year's worth of favourites and we're back to the start again. Time just goes so so quickly it seems. The older I get the faster time goes and I'm going to be 23 this year which is slightly scary, slightly terrifying. Let me know what your favourite products of the month were, if you had an absolute standout or a favourite product from January I would love to know and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and a like if you'd like to see a new hair routine or hair styling current products basically just a big long chat all about my hair and um, so thank you all for watching and I will see you all then bye